Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. I'm Angel Azara, and I'm a professional opera singer and voice teacher. And today, I look like the love child of a mermaid and a poodle. So, this is what living with a hairdresser during quarantine looks like. Anyway, today we are reacting to young Russian singer Diana Ankudinova singing Wicked Game. But before we do, let me remind everyone, if you haven't already, please like and subscribe. And also, your all-time favorite and my best friend Claudia, the other producer of this channel, uh, we're doing another live AMA. This Saturday's topic is how well do we know each other? So, I'm a little nervous. I think I know her pretty well, but I don't know, we'll see. Sometimes I forget the most basic things, like the most basic, basic things on the universe because I'm thinking about like apical expansion or the depression of the larynx or something and things like birthdays slip. So anyway, let's get into Diana. <laughs> So right off the bat, I'm noticing that she's using a couple of different vocal, I don't want to say techniques, but different vocal dynamics. So she is using a little bit of vocal fry. It's usually happening at the very beginning of the phrase. And she's also using a lot of air in her tone. We all know by now my opinions on air in the tone, but I do find it interesting that she's utilizing it with something else. And I do hear quite a bit of core in her sound despite the air. So I'm assuming she's got a pretty big voice. Let's keep going. Shut up, audience. Wow, it's it's such a beautiful sound. What I'm hearing is that little bit of share. She's creating an excessively dark tone by raising her soft palate to the roof so that there's no air really entering into her nasal cavity. So there's just, that soft palate is so high up, there's just no way that she could sound nasal. But on top of that, she has a very open throat. So she has this sort of 180, I mean, if we're thinking only in terms of this, but there's also backspace and then space in the mouth. So it's really 360, just this glowing orb of core voice that's quite dark. And that excessively dark sound, there's one other singer who does it to great effect that I can name off the top of my head, and that would be Cher. Cher has that egg in the back of the throat so high up that the self palate is really raised. And the open throat is so very open that it's just, you're like one second away from a yodel. Us. What? <laughs> wow, it's so deep. Mm -hmm. da, 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 da. That's so low. Oh my goodness. Nice though. It's really, it's a lot of women when they get down there, it can be very breathy just because they don't have the core of the voice to go down that far. Even mezzos, but wow. I mean, she's, that's really, really interesting to me that she has such a low range, but again, so does Cher. You know, there's something to be said are they able to create such an incredibly dark sound because they have a naturally low voice? Or do they have a naturally low voice? You know, that's gotta be kind of a given. And they have such a dark sound and ha can further extend their range because they have been singing in that 360 degree way with no nasality for so long. Mm-hmm. 
You know, it's really very much the same thing with Dimash. It's just impressive to spend so much time in one extremity of the voice and then immediately ricochet into something else. And not only is she doing so, yes, there's breath breathiness around the tone, but honestly, a lot of mezzos with sort of sultrier voices, you know, that like deep grounded female voice, tend to have air around the tone. It's almost a cushion effect for how loud the voice can be. And I don't think that it's affecting how much core she's giving in the sound, how much resonance, how present her voice is. That's not distracting me. Uh, the breathiness isn't distracting me from that. It's giving that this very ethereal quality that I really, really like. And the drums are, it's just this like huge tribal thing. And I really, really like this. All right, Igor Kratoy. <laughs> I noticed a little bit of jaw articulation when she was singing uh, the, the coloratura. It's so weird to say coloratura when it's like not opera, but I mean, when she's riffing, I see a little bit of jaw articulation, but it really looked natural. It didn't look like she was creating the pitch only with jaw tension at all. And she uses just a little bit of neck movement to kind of break up the tension in the strap muscles. Remember all of the muscles that surround and encase the voice box are constricting muscles. So if you can do just a little bit of side to side while you're singing, especially if you're belting something really crazy or if you're doing a big transition and all of the transition is quite high, it's not a bad idea to shake your head a little bit side to side. Don't look like a bobblehead, but you know, do what you can to release some of that neck tension. And she, she did it to great effect. Let's keep going. Do I love her? Yes. Does she look like kind of a mix between Selena Gomez and Demi Lovato? Also yes. Dude, I could listen to this all day. She needs to sing like, she needs to sing the theme song for the next big HBO show. That's like something like that, I don't know. Somebody did ask me on a live, a on a live AMA about her if I thought that she was manipulating the lower notes. Yes. Yes, everything you do when you're singing in technique is manipulation. Do I think that the manipulation she's doing is unhealthy? No, I do prefer a balanced sound. I do prefer there to be nasality and darkness, but she's not singing traditional classical rep. She's not even, I wouldn't call this pop. She's singing like this beautiful, like neo fusion tribal music and it's awesome. And what she's doing is perfect for that. So if she wants to over darken her voice, fine. Now, if she was over darkening at a higher frequency, if she was over darkening like this and trying to carry it up through her passaggio into high voice around D sharp five, I would not be, like if, and if she were in my studio and her, my opinion mattered to her at all, which it doesn't. But if she was in my studio, I would not be okay with that. Now, manipulating it down there, I have no problem with that, especially because she cre can create such a clear tone. I mean, she's not amplified, so it doesn't, she's, I mean, she's not um, unamplified like an opera singer, so she doesn't need that ring in the lower portion of her voice, that bright nasality. So if she wants to lift her soft palate to the gods, and open and lower the back of her, you know, the back of her throat, then fine, by all means. I think it works really well. Yes, it's a manipulation. Literally everything to do with singing and technique is ultimately a manipulation of your body parts. Some manipulations are bad, some manipulations are good. I think for her scenario, it's good. I think she's awesome. And with that being said, that's it for today. I hope you found this video informational or helpful. And as always, toy, toy, toy until next time.